Okay, so welcome everyone to this week of uh, the actual hands-on quantum computing part of this course. So uh, the idea here is that we will uh, try out programming and running stuff on an actual quantum computer in the cloud. So uh, before we start, uh, sort of with the, the practical part, I thought we would just briefly look at what, what are the options for actually doing this. So if you have a, quantum, a program, a quantum algorithm that you would like to run on an actual quantum computer today, uh, what would you do? Uh, what are your options? Anyone? I guess it depends on the amount of qubits, but if it's necessary for the algorithm, but if yeah. you really need that maximum fiber, then I guess you could use the IBM quantum okay. experience. So let's see. Uh, quantum computers uh, available. But is that available to anyone or? I mean, there's not that many that are actually publicly available, right? Yeah, that's another good question. So let's say maybe if you have some resources, you have a company. Uh, so definitely one option is IBM. So IBM has this uh, IBM quantum experience. And they have their own hardware. Uh, uh, it's superconducting circuits. So you mentioned five qubits. I think uh, they have at least up to 16 qubits available mm -hmm. to the public. Uh, and then it's been possible to buy access for up to 20 qubits or something like that before. And now they've recently announced the 53 qubit chip. I don't know if that is online yet, but that you definitely need to pay to access it. Why 53 and not 54? Uh, I don't know how this coincided with the Google uh, uh, chip, yeah. which was 53. So, but the Google chip was 54, but one of the qubits didn't work. Yeah, right. so, I don't know how the <laughs> timing is here with the leak of the Google yeah. result and the announcement <laughs> of this IBM. Uh, it was very close in time. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so. Okay, you could go to IBM, and that is actually the plan for us to do uh, this week. Uh, but do you have any other options? Rigetti. Rigetti, yes. Is that open at the moment? Yeah. Um, so Rigetti has this environment they call the forest. High quill and groove, and yeah, they have many parts of this, but they also have their own hardware uh, and it's uh, superconducting uh, circuit. There, and so they have their own hardware, there's also a simulator, just a, for IBM also has a simulator you can choose to run on instead of that. Too. Uh, I'm not sure how many qubits you can get access to with Rigetti. Uh, they've had 19 qubit chips at least. I don't know if those have been publicly available. <coughs> I mean, I mean, it's not now with the Amazon. Yeah, it was I was 32, I think. 32, then. Yes, okay. yeah. or 34, I don't remember exactly. Okay, so yes, Andreas mentioned this most recent edition here today. Uh, Amazon is getting into this business. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so this was announced like yesterday or day before yesterday. Uh, uh, it's uh, the AWS, Amazon Web Server Services, yeah. is like cloud computing part of it. Yeah, but I call it the Amazon uh, bracket. Oh. So yeah, just announced the other day. And so they don't have their own hardware, but you can get access to different providers. Uh, so they have something from Rigetti, as Andrea said. Uh, they have something from Ion2, the Ion Truck quantum computer company. And you can also get access to D Wave, some D Wave machine. So that's an interesting addition. I didn't, I don't know if it was available to, I didn't try to use it yet. If, and it's also that Microsoft announced something a few weeks ago, a similar thing to Amazon. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh. And I think that was going to be a Honeywell, at least access to a Honeywell Lion Trap. But also, wasn't it also Iron Q as well? Or no? Maybe it was both of them. Yeah, so I don't know if I have the latest on Microsoft. So they, they, they have something they call their quantum development kit. Rigetti has languages of in this forest uh, thing. Um, here, yeah, they don't have their own hardware as far as I know, but provide they have providers uh, that include Ion Cube and Yes, and Honeywell. Honeywell? Yes. So was Honeywell also? I don't track, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess Microsoft. I think also maybe also Yale was going to be like the um, Bosonic. The superconducting cavities? Yes, I think that was going to provide part of the as well, if I don't misremember. Okay. Yeah, I guess they're waiting for their Majorana firmness yeah, okay. for a while. So they need some other hardware before that. Um, Okay, do we have any more? In Innsbruck? Innsbruck? Yes. Alpine Quantum yes. Technologies? Uh, AQT, I think it's yeah. I'm short for. So they have their own hardware. Yes. And it's is it publicly accessible? I I, I, I have seen uh, like I know at least that Google's uh, library can can connect to that hardware. So, yeah. But then you you probably, you probably need some some key. I don't know if you, you know anyone can get that or not. Yeah. But. Yeah. There's the Google Circ. Yeah. That's probably their hardware and in this time track. Yes. Yeah, so Google, yeah, they have this thing called Surf. Uh, they have some own hardware. I mean, we all have seen the quantum supremacy paper, Sycamore chip. What, uh, as far as I know, this is not publicly available. So there is like classes to connect to, to their hardware, yeah. but so you need to have a password, I guess. Yeah. yeah which I don't know if anyone has that yet. It's, it's not like I've been wearing no. a sign up. Not, not, uh, not yet, at least. But so, you, you, anyone can sign up and sort of use the simulator? Yeah, there is a simulator which is open source. Yes. I think the third case was Q in the end. Yeah. Okay. okay. Do we 
a more. Do we count the D wave as a quantum computer or a quantum amino? Uh, it's some sort of quantum computer. Yeah. I mean, in this course, we're talking about quantum annealing and all sorts of quantum efforts. It's not a, it's not a universal mm -hmm. quantum computer, but it's. Yeah, okay. Um, so they have something they call QB Solve to help you map problems to their computer, I think. Uh, they have their own hardware. Um, I think you need to pay <laughs> to use that. I don't know, like, maybe if they have something smaller you can uh, use. But uh, the, I mean, the big machines they are selling for There's also something tens of millions of dollars. Intel and slash Delft, right? Yes. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, so, uh, wait, wait. So Intel slash this is called QTech yes. in Delft. They have something called uh, Quantum Inspire. Um, they, at the moment I checked the other day, they have only simulate, simulators available now. Uh, and maybe in the future it will be possible to access hardware. Right? Okay. Um, well, I guess we mentioned IonQ. They have their own hardware, but I've, I've only seen them as providers for others. Not uh, there is no direct way to access them it's through one of these other services. Um, okay, other options? These are all qubit based. Yeah. There is one uh, with con for continuous variable. So this is the strawberry fields. Uh, by the yes. I was waiting for you to see it. Yeah. <laughs> they have some hardware that they were going to link with the software, but right now they just have the simulator. Yeah, so it's probably the uh, is that the simulator? So there's that's the, the everything. That's like uh Penny Lane. Penny Lane is uh, what what's the difference between Penny Lane? So Penny Lane is sort of the tensor flow for quantum circuits. Mm -hmm. But it's not just tensor flow, it connects any arbitrary simulator to any auto differentiation to like tensor flow or pi torch. Mm -hmm. It's like a bridge where you want to differentiate a quantum circuit and run it on a actual hardware. So that's the, the Swiss Army knife for it. Yeah. So these are things you could uh, you can connect to different backends. Yeah, any lane you can. Yeah. Um, so connect to different backends. They actually have backends for CERC, IBM, Twisted, uh, Microsoft's device, and um, and there's some hardware on its way. But yeah, they have a hardware, like a continuous variable. So some so some some yeah. uh, hardware. But that's not available yet. No, but it's coming. <laughs> but it's strawberry fields and paneling, you can access. Yeah, it's open source. Open source. And is there some simulator you can use? Both of them have a back end uh, default simulator for continuous variable and qubit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, more? There's quite a few players here. And there's also some neutral atoms, right? Okay. I mean, I'm, I'll at least start I, mean, I, 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 I tried to make a survey, but I, I'm yeah. sure I missed several. But I don't think they have any anything you could access so far. Um, okay, I'll tell you some other. I, I 
in terms of Chinese on the computer also, uh, provided by Alibaba uh, in collaboration with Chinese Academy of Sciences. So they have some smaller superconducting circuit, 11 qubits, I think. Simulations count? Yeah, so that was what I was going to actually. So far, we've mentioned uh, mostly hardware or something that connects to some hardware. But yeah, then you have simulations. Yeah. So then I guess your own computer. <laughs> yeah. Well, come on, but <laughs> but uh, then you have like Project Q and then you have QTIP, of course. Yeah. So then, yes, exactly. Uh, project Q. Uh, so that was sort of some hardware available. Project Q, this is from EH. Yeah. Um, they can connect to several different backends, I think. I'm not sure about their backends. I think IBM Q is one. Well. Yeah. Some backends for what it is. Um then as you mentioned we have Q T. Um Q Flex. Q Flex. I think it's Google like with tensor networks for Okay. How do you spell it? Q and then alpha. Yeah, flex. Okay. Uh, in the quest, what is it from? Quest? Or simulator. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, it's yeah. 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 okay. Q, E, I think, or Q. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, can, you probably have a number of different. Uh, uh, a uh, number of different languages or libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, if you look more, there is yeah. more full-fledged simulators that are on, on the market. So you perhaps have heard of Altos. It's a French, French company. Um, So they do classical simulation. Um, not for free, but uh, then I mean on your computer you can, as you said, you can use MATLAB for uh, your uh, programming language of choice to simulate a few qubits, maybe up to ten or so. Uh, uh, but then if you want to start trying a little larger circuits, like 20, 30, maybe up to 40 qubits, uh, either you have to be really good at programming, or uh, at some point you need some help. So they, they specialize in these large scale simulations. Uh, if you want to test your quantum computer, basically when you scale it up. Um, yeah. So there are a few hardware providers out there. There are lots of software providers. There are lots of startups these days. Some sort of quantum software. Um, it's too difficult to list them all. Um, I should say I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. This is not an advertisement or anything. Uh, if you want to try to keep track, there is a website. Uh, quantum 
obvious thing. Report dot com. So quantum computing report as one word. Uh, they try to keep updated this to sort of all the companies, all the players in the team. Uh, recent news, companies that got funded and uh, stuff like that. That's, yeah, that's a good resource. There's also quantum open source foundation.org which has all these listed. Mm -hmm. So it's Q O S F. Q O S F. All right, that was some introduction. Um, and it seemed to me like we will go for the IBM Kiskit experience uh, this week because it seemed the most easily accessible and you can try both simulators and real hardware and uh, see if your algorithms work so uh, did some people bring their laptops today? as I asked last time <laughs> or, yeah, if you are close by you can get it from your own so I, I was thinking we can uh, Working pairs of or a group of two, so three. Everyone team up with someone that has a laptop. Uh, and I don't know. Perhaps there are people here who are already very experienced with Kiskit. I see Morten is not here, <laughs> otherwise I think he could have taught the class instead of me. Um, I'm a bit experienced. Okay, that's good. Because uh, I've used it, but uh, not too much. More for preparing this. Uh, okay, so let's do it like this. Um, Google IBM Q experience and uh, create an account. <laughs> so you can, that's your first task. Yeah. I will stop the video. Thank <laughs> you.